The Dakar 2025 is almost over and we want to take a look at what happened so far. We currently have three manufacturers and four cars fighting for the overall win. And I ask you who you think will win this year. After almost 900 votes, most people think that Ekstrom and the new M Sport Ford Raptor will win and only 20% think that current leader and desert expert Araji will drive to victory. I'm writing down the competitors' times after every stage and this table gives us a pretty good idea who had a good day, who had a bad day and when. Out of the 65 cars of the entry list, 15 already withdrew. These are the cars marked red on the left. And out of the remaining still driving 50 cars, only 13 are within 10% of the lead. All others had major problems and lost lots of time in the desert. We can see how the top drivers are Latia, Irachi and Latigan intentionally had a slower first stage to get a better starting position for the marathon stage of day 2. From that point onwards, they are having a very good Dakar. Impressive is how well the brand new M Sport Ford Raptor is performing. It's reliable, fast and drives in 3rd and 5th position overall. It also looks like the Dacia Sand Rider could solve most of the issues of the BRX Hunter and performs well. One problem here was that the new spare wheel holder broke while driving and they lost the spare wheel, which resulted in a penalty. We talked about the importance of the spare wheel holder and the constant problems of the BRX Hunter in my Dacia video. The new system is a very thin support tube which holds the wheel from below and this one broke. After this, the wheel is only fixed by three belts and that didn't last for very long. The Century CR7 shows some impressive performance and the small South African manufacturer is still competing with the big names in front, after they sorted out suspension and spring issues. More on the CR7 design with its Audi RS4 engine in my other video. For Century, that is important advertisement as they are becoming a real alternative if you want to fight for a Dakar win. Pretty soon, we could see more big names driving Century. And the new X-Rate Petrol Mini with its straight 6-cylinder BMW Alpina engine showed impressive performance, but their cars were a bit unlucky. Shishiri, Yushevisius and also Loeb experienced the same kind of accident. They hit a ditch, which wasn't in the roadbook, at high speed, which sent their rear axle up high and they landed sideways, which resulted in a roll. The minis were out immediately due to big damage, Loeb had a softer roll and could continue, but because of the slight damage to his cage, he wasn't allowed to continue. The cage damage topic will become a longer discussion after the Dakar and you can check out my video about it. So competitors wanted a harder Dakar and it wasn't an easy one so far. Interesting for us tech freaks is always to understand why cars have problems. The Coronel brothers in their CR7 for example had issues with the alternator and although they had two batteries on board they were not charging while driving which left them stranded in the desert. Many issues came up due to dust and competitors not seeing obstacles like big stones. Vanagas damaged his Toyota so hard by hitting a big rock that he couldn't continue. And three cars withdrew because the co-driver was injured. That happened either because of a hard landing after a jump or because the dampers gave up which shaked the passengers so much that they got brain concussions or spine injuries. So the Dakar is very demanding this year again and already gave us lots of drama. If you want to know more about the details of Dakar cars, check out my Dakar playlist below and see you at the next video.